I have this screen capture I recorded using OBS of a quick Google search and I want to make it look like I filmed it on a camera. This is a trending pretty cool effect. Once you're done following the tutorial, these are going to be your results. I won't be using any third party plugins in this tutorial. I'll be using all native After Effects plugins, but I do want to mention if you are a Production Crate Pro user, you can just use the CRT Factory plugin that's going to create a very similar looking effect. It's far more realistic and it's really, really fast. But if you're not a Production Crate Pro user and you want to use all native plugins to After Effects, I'll show you how to create this effect. It won't look as realistic, but it'll do the job. So I have my screen capture footage all set up and the next thing I'll do is create an adjustment layer. Then I'll search for the grid effect and I'll apply that to my adjustment layer. I'll switch the size from to width and height sliders. For width, let's do three. Height, I'll enter three as well. And for border, let's go with two. Then for color, I'm going to set this to red. And under blending mode, let's swap this to soft light. And if I zoom in, we can get an idea of the effect that we are going for. All right, I'm going to duplicate my grid effect and let's switch this color to green. And then I could just offset this anchor slightly till I could see both the red and the green. And then I will duplicate my grid one last time and let's switch this to a blue and I'll offset that as well. Let's duplicate the grid one more time for color. Let's switch this to black. I'm going to change my blending mode from soft light to darken. I'll change my width to four and four. Things are looking pretty good, maybe a little too sharp. So let's go ahead and add a Gaussian blur and I'll set this to something low like two and that'll just soften everything up. The next thing I want to do is fake a screen bulge. So I'll add a bulge effect and we want this to be the size of our composition, which is 1920 by 1080. So I'll just enter 1920 by 1080. And now we have a bulge, which if we move it around, it does a good job of faking a 3D perspective. I'll set that here for now. Let's get a little more advanced with it. So I'm going to go to layer, new, no object, and I'll hit enter and let's just rename this center. And then I'll hit P for position. And then I'll select my adjustment layer again. And then I'm going to alt click my bulge center. And then I could see in my drop down the bulge center and this spiral pick whip. If I take that, I can pick whip the position parameter listed under that null object. And now if I move my null object around, we'll see that the bulge center follows it. I want to add a little depth of field. So I'll hit control Y to create a new solid. I'll just call this gradient and I'll apply a gradient ramp effect. We'll swap it from linear ramp to radial ramp. For my start ramp, I'll alt click that stopwatch and then I'll pick whip my center null position parameters. Now, if I move my null object around, you'll see that this black circle follows it. Now the black circle is changing the size because the white center of that ramp is not moving. We can fix this by also pick whipping the end of ramp to match our center null position, but with a slight offset. So I'm going to alt click my end of ramp, take that pick whip again and drag that onto my center nulls position parameters. And now everything is going to be white. If I select this expression, I can hit something like plus 500 and that's just going to offset it by 500 pixels. And now if I move my center null around, we'll see that the black circle isn't changing shape anymore. All right, I'm going to go ahead and disable the visibility of my gradient layer, and I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. Let's add the camera lens blur effect to this adjustment layer. I'm going to find where it says blur map layer, and let's select the gradient. Then I'll check source. Then I'll toggle down the source and change that to effects and masks. And now we can see this blur fall off that is happening. So if I move my center null over to that magnifying glass, we'll see that the focus is right there on the magnifying glass. And of course, I can keyframe the position of this null. Now we are seeing this kind of moire effect that's happening, this radiating circle. Let's see if we can adjust that a little bit. It is coming from this grid for layer. I'll start by just taking down the opacity. Right around 28 is actually looking pretty good. Now I could stop here. This effect is looking pretty good, but I do want to add a few more elements. 
Now, if you don't want to use any third-party plugins, you can stop here and the effect is looking pretty good, but I'm going to use the Crates Chromatic Aberration, which is going to add a little more realism to this shot. This is a free plugin. I do encourage you to use it. I'm going to just drag that onto my top adjustment layer and I'll alt click the center. I'll take the pick whip like we've been doing and I'll parent it to the position parameters of my center null. Now, if I move that null around, you'll see that we have this kind of radiating, realistic chromatic aberration. It is a little too intense for me, so I'm going to take the aberration down to 15. And that just adds a little bit of realistic chromatic aberration to our shot. So this is before aberration. If I zoom in here, you can see it happening and I'll re-enable it. Let's go ahead and animate this. I'll move my null object over here, create a keyframe for the position move it to the end of my timeline and just move the null over. Now that's looking pretty good. I do think I want to increase the bulge a little bit. So I'll take the bulge height and let's bump that up to 1.5. And that gives us a little bit more of a realistic macro shot. Now, if you do want Crates Chromatic Aberration, it is included in the LaForge suite. All you have to do is download the portal application, sign in or register for an account and install the LaForge suite. The CRT factory is also part of the LaForge suite, but it will have a watermark if you do not have a pro account. But other than that watermark, you will be able to test out CRT factory if it's something you think you might want for a future project. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you want to learn anything else, let me know in the comments below. Later, creators.